Now I would like to use these remarks on the increasing dynamic of power and competence to define the character of the present age. It is common in the Western world to say that we are living in a postmodern era. What this means is either an epigonic position in relation to heroic and avant-garde modernism, especially in the arts, or a disillusioned position in relation to exalted ideas of historical planning and control of nature. If modernity were a composite of genius and constructivism, postmodernism would be a mix of mediocrity and chaos management. I would like to show that these contrasts are not valid from the perspective of the history of competencies, because above and beyond these two positions and running right through them is the unstoppable spiral of increasing power. In fact, we might even see the so-called postmodern age as just one more landmark in the dynamic of empowerment that has accumulated over centuries. What characterizes the postmodern era is the stereotyping of former avant-garde qualities and the transposing of the creativity that was once associated with pathos into everyday manipulation of materials and symbols through the members of a worldwide design civilization. In other words, through the supranational smart new middle layer of society. On this view, modernism and postmodernism are linked by an overwhelming continuity. So-called postmodernism is doubtless also a phase in the history of the Euro-American plus ultra. It has not relaxed the compulsion to power. At most, it has adapted the compulsion to be competent to state-of-the-art technology and introduced a degree of play into the contemporary style of competence. There is no sign of a real historic break in the sense of stopping the escalation of competence. As long as a superior power does not blast the spiral of increasing competence, it will continue winding on unimpeded as the kinetic core of modernity. Even that which would like to resist it seems to contribute to its thrust. Anyone who opposes it just propels it further. Consequently, modernity can only be followed by a further higher level of modernity. As long as the world is left to pursue its own dynamic, our times have nothing ahead of them except their own continuation and heightening into the unforeseeable future, which will always maintain the same principles, up to the limiting values which we assume can also be overwritten and extended on and on. This means that modernity is its own end time and can intrinsically be nothing for itself except its own future source as long as it continues to be winding onwards of the competence spiral. In this sense, we must understand it as a dynamic millennium. Those who live their lives as genuine participants in the global experiment of the modern age have to account for their spontaneous involvement in a millenary operation. The yet unvanquished imperial motto has been valid since the 16th century in Europe. Regardless of whether we see Columbus or Charles V as the engineer of the Renaissance or the utopians of the Baroque period as the original apostles of the modernist gospel of competence, we are still following on from them with each statement of life today. Whether we look back for centuries or extrapolate the present into the future, we are first and foremost agent and media for a thousand-year empire of competence.